Okay, so we're moving on to D1, Chapter 3, which is Algorithms on Graphs. And really, this is kind of like the first proper applications of algorithms that we're doing. Um, and this is kind of one of the most common types of questions that will be coming up, where you have a graph or a weighted network, and you're trying to figure out some of these particular algorithms. And I kind of wanted to start off by telling you about the names of the algorithms and then telling you about some of the mathematicians, just to kind of set in context about this, this field of maths. So we look at Kruskal's algorithm and Prim's algorithm. We look at Dijkstra's algorithm, and we also look at Floyd's algorithm. Them. And I've put the mathematicians who were involved in creating these algorithms here, really just to kind of show you how modern this field of maths is. So Joseph Kruskal was alive until 2010, and he was an American mathematician. And the reason I've included Wojtek Janik is because he was actually a Czech mathematician who came up with Prim's algorithm before Robert C. Prim published the Prim's algorithm under his name. But actually, there's evidence that this um, Czech mathematician, um, Wojtek Janik, had actually published this before for or had come up with the algorithm previously. Now Dijkstra's algorithm, Dijkstra is a Dutch mathematician, he's from the Netherlands, and again you can see these people have been sort of, you know, around a lot more recently than most of the mathematicians that we've studied in other areas, which are usually things like Isaac Newton and Euler and even some people from like ancient Greek, Greek times with people like Pythagoras. And then when we get to Floyd's algorithm, Floyd is also an American mathematician, but even though it's called Floyd's algorithm, actually Stephen Warshall um, and Bernard Roy have both been credited with coming up with um, that algorithm before, and sometimes people call it the floyd warshall um, algorithm, but in the textbook they go with um, Kruskal, Prim, and Floyd, even though there was this French guy who came up with it in the, the late 50s, and I think these guys came up with it in the 60s. So it's just kind of nice to see where this has all come from, and it's interesting that this is mostly American mathematicians, but there are some other European mathematicians in there, and they're all men. I mean, I'm hoping that lots of people watching these videos are female and wanting to go into the field of maths. You know, there's a big demand for there being more diversity in maths. And I just wanted to kind of start off this topic by looking at some of the, the very modern mathematicians who have created some of these algorithms that we look at. And so this whole chapter is concerned with applying algorithms to weighted graphs or networks in order to find the shortest distances between locations. And you can kind of see why trying to find the shortest distances between locations, why that's going to be useful, um, whether that's trying to connect up villages together with I don't know, laying fiber optic cable, or whether you're going to be concerned with wanting to kind of deliver things to lots of locations. This kind of stuff has lots and lots of applications. So in the textbook, they do um, Kruskal's algorithm and Prim's algorithm separately. But I wanted to look at both of these algorithms at the same time, because they're really similar to each other. And I think by looking them, uh, looking at them simultaneously, you're going to see some of the similarities and also some of the differences, which I hope will make it a little bit easier to remember the difference between them. So both of these algorithms aim to find a minimum spanning tree for a network, and we're going to call a minimum spanning tree, it often gets referred to as MST. Now let's just break down what this definition is going to mean. So it's going to be a spanning tree, which we looked at in the previous chapter, such that the total weight is as small as possible. So we've got that idea of it being the minimum span spanning tree for a network. And sometimes this MST is referred to as a minimum connector because it's the smallest way that you can connect together all of the vertices in a network. Kind of like what I was just saying about wanting to connect together villages or towns using fiber optic cable. This would be the minimum amount of cable that would be required. Now, if we were actually going to design this algorithm ourselves before all of these mathematicians had thought about this, I think if we were going to try and find the minimum spanning tree, these are some of the things we would put into our design. One of the things that we would want is to add the lowest weight edges first. Otherwise, it's not going to be a minimum. We don't really want to prioritize the, the heavy edges. We want to have the lightest edges being added. Another thing that we also would be really careful of when we were designing this algorithm is we would never want to create a cycle. Because if we did create a cycle, it's no longer a tree. Remember that a tree has no cycles at all. And last of all, we would want to make sure that the algorithm included every vertex, otherwise it isn't spanning or covering the whole of the network. So we've kind of taken minimum spanning tree and designed, using those three words, the priorities that we would have for this algorithm. Minimum, lowest weights, tree, never a cycle, spanning to include every vertex. And the difference between Kruskal's algorithm and Prim's algorithm are the priorities, the things that they prioritize in the algorithm. 
Now, Kruskal's algorithm prioritizes adding the smallest edges first. That is the number one thing that the Kruskal algorithm does. It always wants to add the smallest edges. And after it's added a smallest edge, it would then check, okay, well, I don't want to make add, I don't want to put any cycles in here because I do want it to be a tree. And it would finish when every vertex had been included. And I'll talk about this bit down here in just a second. Now, Prim's algorithm is slightly different. The priorities for number one and two have switched places. So what Prim always prioritizes is that it has to be a tree. And obviously that means we're not, never going to have any cycles. So in Prim's algorithm, it is always going to be adding a new edge to the tree as though it's kind of growing from the original edge that you have. So we're never going to have like um, bits where it's kind of popping up all over the place. And then the second priority for Prim's algorithm is to add the smallest edges, but you can only add, a ed add an edge if it is already connected to the tree. And of course, it is going to finish Prim's algorithm when every vertex has been included. And so some of the ways we can try and remember this is a little sort of a, a word play that Kruskal's algorithm often looks chaotic. And yeah, I've spelt it silly with a K there to try and help us remember it. And it doesn't always resemble a tree until the end, because if you're going to be adding the um, edges, which are the smallest to begin with, they might not be connected, but eventually they will be connected when all of them have been added, when all of the vertices have been added. Prims, however, always looks neat or prim and proper as it will always grow as a tree does. It will always remain connected. Now, if you click this link here from the PDF, this will take you through to a YouTube video which shows you a visualization of Kruskal's algorithm and Prim's algorithm as the minimum spanning tree is created. They create the same spanning tree, but this one kind of has bits all popping up all over the place on the network, whereas Prim's kind of grows almost like how you imagine like a tree growing or I don't know if you've ever seen those kind of videos of like how a virus spreads through something it kind of starts in one place and it spreads to all of the other places and that this is just some other terminology that I don't think really gets used in D1 but it's kind of worth um, using some of these ideas this is a, a proper term this isn't my just making this up both algorithms are greedy and they're greedy because they are always going to prioritize taking the lowest available edge Criticals can be absolutely anywhere but prims must connect to somewhere already on the tree and neither can create a cycle. And so the best thing with this is really to just do some examples with this. And this first one that we're going to do is we're going to find the minimum spanning tree for this following network that we've got here. And then we're going to state the weight of the tree. And I'll probably draw the tree as well. And we're going to do criticals for this first one that we've got. So here is a reminder of the priorities. And there are some tips that we're going to have for this. Now, to save us some time, I've actually done some of the tips already. So the first thing we want to do is list the vertices in ascending order. So here I wrote down all of the vertices that were on this um, network that we have. And then I've rewritten them into ascending order, starting with the smallest and going up to the biggest one that we've got here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to indicate whether we're going to accept or reject the edge. And examiners are really obsessed with seeing which are the ones that you accept and which are the ones that you reject. Now, when you do this, you just need to make sure when you're accepting and rejecting, you only accept ones that will make a tree and you reject ones that would make a cycle because it would no longer make a minimum spanning tree. If there is a choice of equal edges, you can pick either. You will still find the minimum spanning tree, but you could end up with a different looking tree. So if they ever ask you to find two or three different minimum spanning trees, then you can just investigate what happens if you pick any of those equally weighted edges that we've got here. So I've saved us some time by taking the edges and also putting them in ascending order. And now we're going to go through this process of deciding whether we should accept them or whether we're going to reject them. So I think to begin with, we're definitely going to want to accept DE that we've got here and we're going to put it onto the tree. Now, I'm going to use a highlighter here and they say in exams you shouldn't use a highlighter. But I guess you could always on the, um, the question booklet, because in decision you have a question booklet and an answer booklet, you can always draw on things. And so if you don't have a highlighter and you just want to do it with a pencil, you could always just draw a line on it with a pencil. But I'm, of course, going to just use um, a highlighter to make this a bit easier. So I'm just going to highlight that DE is great. So we want to include that one on there. And then FG, that's absolutely fine. We can include that one because it's going to be something that has a minimum weight. It's got a very small weight there. Same with CD, we can include that. No cycles are being created here. And BD, let's see if BD would be okay. Yeah, we can add BD because we're not creating any cycles at all. 
CE though, if you look at CE, if we added CE, we would create a cycle. So we are going to reject CE. You can either put a cross next to it or you can just, after these things, say accept, 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 and then you can just write reject next to them. Now, the next one I'm going to consider is EG. EG is perfectly fine to add. So I'm going to just highlight that on there and I'm going to put a little tick next to it. And just as I'm doing this, notice how I always write these in alphabetical order, um, or so they always have the, the lower letter on the left or the one closest to A and the closest to Z on the other side. So my next one is EF. Now I'm not going to include EF because that would create a cycle. So I'm going to reject EF. And then I have CF. Now CF also is creating a cycle that we've got here like this. So it doesn't just have to be triangles, it could be any polygon that gets created. So I'm going to reject CF. Now I'm going to have a look at connecting AC. Yep, AC does not create a cycle, so I'm going to tick that one. And I think I've only got one um, vertex that needs to be connected, which is H. So I definitely don't want to use AB because that creates a cycle. And then I'm going to use that last one that we've got, which is GH that we have here. And so I am going to use GH because it does connect um, to the last vertex that we're looking for, which means I wouldn't be using these. Now you would need to just kind of copy this out, but I have my iPad so I can kind of save myself a little bit of time. And so when I actually draw the minimum spanning tree, it would look like this highlighted one that I've got here. And I'm just gonna say this is A, C, D, E, F, G, H, and B. And if we wanted to include these um, sort of distances that we've got or the weights of the edges, then of course we can do that as well. And I'm just gonna do the very last part of the question, which is to actually find what that minimum weight is. Now I kind of regret using the yellow color, so on the next one, I'll maybe use a bolder color, or you can just see how I would, I don't know, just connect these together like this, just in case anybody prints these off. I don't think the yellow would come up very clearly. Okay, so the thing the examiner is looking for is this, the order that they've been accepted. Um, that's why it's always good to write them out in this list like this. So once this, the weight of the tree that we've got here, I'm just on my calculator, I'm gonna do 30 plus 22 plus 24 plus 18 plus 26 plus 21 plus 33. And so the weight of this tree is just 174. So the weight is 174. So we're now gonna do the exact same network, apart from this time, we're going to do it using Prim's algorithm. And with Prim's algorithm, they usually tell you where to start. If they don't tell you where to start, you can just pick wherever you want to. Now remember with Prim's algorithm, we're always going to want it to be a tree, and we're always going to, um, after that, we will prioritize the smallest edges. So we've got some tips here. We're gonna write down the edges that you accept in order. You're not gonna be rejecting any of them here, you're just gonna be thinking about which are the ones you want to accept. And again, examiners really want to see this stuff. Another tip is to check all the possible edges, not just ones connected to the last vertex added. And you'll see what I mean by that when we do the example. And for this one, you'll notice that the edges don't really need to be ordered first. And so that makes this one a little bit quicker to use because here, this actually took me quite a long time to put them in order. That's why I did it before the video to try and um, save you a bit of time of me just literally writing out numbers and figuring out how they go in order. So let's actually look at Prim's algorithm with this. I'm gonna do it starting with A and I'm gonna to switch to a different highlighter color and we're gonna begin starting here. And really we've got just a choice between the 30 and the 31. So obviously we're gonna pick that 30 because that's going to be smaller. Now for this next part, I wanna say you're checking all of the possible edges that you can do, not just ones connected to C. So we've got the choice of the 31, the 22, the 24 and the 29. So obviously the smallest of those is the 22. And I forgot to do this. You should always write down the edges that you add. So that was AC we did and then CD. Now after I've done CD, I wanna check everything coming from C, everything coming from D and everything coming from A. Well, it's definitely gonna be this quick one that we've got here. 18 is a very low number. So we're gonna do DE is our next part that we're going to connect, which is 18 that we've got there. Now that we've connected this, I wanna see if I've got any small ones coming up that I can do. Now, I don't wanna do the 24 because that will create a cycle. This 24 looks like a good one that I can do. So I'm gonna do that next one left, uh, that next one there, which is BD. I've done it BD just because of alphabetical order. Now, after I've done that, I'm gonna check everything from here. Well, that's only got a 38, it's got a 34. From E, I don't wanna do the 24 because that creates a cycle and I've got the 28 and the 26. So the 26 is gonna be my smallest. 
So I'm now going to do my EG that I can add to that part that we've got there. Now, this looks probably the smallest one on the network that I haven't done this 21. So I think I'm going to want to connect that together. I'm going to do that FG, which is 21. So that's FG for my next part. And then the final thing that I want to connect is H. And the smallest of the ways to connect that H together is going to be with this GH, which is 33. So I'm going to connect together GH for this last part. And now you can see with the highlight that I've got everything all put in the right places. Like I said, you could just do this on the answer booklet, just kind of using a pencil to kind of shade over things. Um, and then you just can redraw the diagram. Now to save me some time, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste this down here. And then I'm just going to draw out the tree and then hopefully we've got the same one as using crystals. So we have A, C, D, B, E, G, F and H. So here is our minimum spanning tree. I'll very quickly add the weights on. And then if we've done it, this, if we've done this correctly, it will give us the same minimum spanning tree as done with Criscoll's algorithm. It's just uh, it should also have the same minimum weight as well. So we had 30, 22, 24, 18, 26, 21, and 33. So let's just quickly see if this is the same. I'm going to save us a bit of time. Is it the same one? Yeah, you can see actually we've got exactly the same as the one that's on the previous page. So to save us some time, I'm not going to add all of those on my calculator again. We've got that the weight is 174. So what I want you to now try is I want you to do the minimum spanning tree for this network and you're going to use Criscoll's algorithm. And then for this one, you're going to use Prim's starting at A. And then after that, you can go to exercise 3A and 3B. So it's the same network that we've got. One is going to be with Criscoll's and one is going to be with Prim's. So pause the video and have a go and see if you come up with the same thing as me. OK, so what I like to do when I'm listing the edges is just go through alphabetically to make sure that I've got all of them. So AB is my first in the alphabet. That's going to be 10. I've then got AC, which is 14, and it doesn't connect to any of the other ones. Now, alphabetically, I don't need to do B with A. So I'll do B with C, which is 13, B with D, which is 14, B with E, which is 15, and B with F, which is 20. No more connections there. Now I'll start with C. Uh, well, C can go with E and F. So C, E is 17 and C, F is 18. And it can't go to the, any, any of the other ones. And then I'm going to start with D. So always looking for things after um, D in the alphabet. So I'm going to have D, E, which is 12 and D, F, which is 19. And then after D, we're just going to have E, F, which is 18 that we've got there. And then I like to just check I've got all of them. So I've got 3, 6, 9, 10, 11. And I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I know that I've definitely gathered all of those ones correctly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write them in order. So this is often the bit that I can find myself getting wrong or not doing so good. So I'm going to say the smallest one that we've got is AB which is 10, and I'm just going to cross through to show that I've done it. Then it looks like I'm going to have DE, which is 12, uh, BC, which is 13. Now, it doesn't matter which order you do these. So I'm going to have AC is 14, BD is 14, and then I have BE, which is 15, and then what have I got? 17 next, so CE, which is 17. CF, which is 18, EF, which is 18, DF, which is 19, and BF, which is 20. So I'm just going to go through and decide whether I'm going to accept them or not. And again, I'm going to annotate some things on the diagram to help me. So definitely want to use AB because that doesn't create anything. And I definitely want to use DE because that's not creating anything. BC, that looks good. AC, I'm not going to use. So I'm going to start going through. I'm going to do yes, 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 but I didn't want to use that one. Now BD, that's perfectly good. BE, nope, that's going to create a cycle. So that was good and then bad. Now for CE that we've got here, can I do CE? Nope, that's going to create a cycle as well. So I'm going to reject that. CF, yep, CF looks pretty good. Let's include CF. 
and then I have EF, nope, that's going to create a cycle. And actually, I think we've got everything connected. So none of these things need to be added, do they? Because I've actually got the whole tree here. I'll just double check that that works, though. Yeah, DF creates a cycle and BF also creates a cycle. So I've got all of these ones added and I've shown the examiner the order that I've done them in. And I'm going to just very quickly write this out, write, draw out my minimum spanning tree. So I have my A, B, C, F, B and E. So it goes A, B, C, F. D and E, and we have 10, 13, 18, 14, and 12. And so the weight is, adding these numbers together, 10, 13, 18, 14, and 12. The weight is 67. Okay, let's see if we get the same thing when we do the minimum spanning tree using prims. And we're going to start with A at this point, okay? So I'll go to the same colour I did before, which was green. I definitely want to use AB to start off with because that is a nice, simple arc. Now, my choices are I've got the 13, 20, 15, 14. I definitely think the short, smallest of those is going to be this one, which is BC that we've got here. Now, the next smallest one that I've got, remember, it could be connected to C or B. I think it's going to be this one down here, which is 14. So it's going to be BD that gets added next. And now looking at all of these ones that are connected, I finally got connected to this 12 here. So I can connect up that 12, which is DE. And then out of all the remaining ones that are connected, um, well, this would make a cycle. I've got 20 to get to F. I've got 18 to get to F, or I've got this 18 to get to F here. So we've got these two choices. So I'm going to say that it could be CF or it could be EF. This is where we've got two different kinds of minimum spanning trees, but you're still going to end up with the same thing. If I did CF that we have here, you will see that we've got exactly the same as this one that we have. We didn't do EF for this one because we'd already completed it, but if these were switched the other way around, you will see that we would have accepted the EF before we did the CF. So it depends. You might have done this question and you might have had this edge instead of this edge. So it could be either way around. So I'm gonna now just draw this out. I'm gonna say it goes here, 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 here and here. So we have the A, B, C, F, D, E, or let's do it for the sake of completing this as we would like. It could have been this kind of shape and it also would have been a minimum spanning tree. It just depends on which one you're going to add. So they might say show that there were two and this is the place where we can see that they give us two. And again, I'll say if these were swapped, if swapped, it produces an alternative answer. That says alt, it produces an alt answer, but it still has the same weight because they're both 67, they're both 18, that extra one that we add on. So the weight is just gonna be 67. You obviously need to decide one of these. So I, I decided that it was CF in this case. And that's what the examiner is looking for. They're looking for that. They might be looking for the diagram and they're going to be looking for that total weight that you've got. So now you can go and try and practice some stuff from exercise 3A and 3B. And the crystals and prims algorithms, they're going to be coming back up later on in a future chapter. So don't just think it's something that's by itself. It is going to be used in some of the other things that we look at later on.